Hi everyone, Adrian here, and today uh, on uh, Write Productively, I'm going to talk about what I mean by writing productively. So, the best way to describe it to you is through a uh, analogy. And what I want you to think of is you're writing, whatever your project is, whether it be a book, or a um, novella, or a script, and I want you to think that it's kind of a journey where, where you start the story at point A, and you end it at point B. And I want to think you to think that this is like a rally. Um, and it's the type of rally, it's an endurance rally, so there's no prize for being there first, it's just about getting it completed, because it's quite tough. And this rally is going to take you through urban areas, built up areas, it's going to take you through deserts, it's going to take you through all sorts of terrain, which is kind of like, you know, representing, you know, the different turns and, and complexity of your story. And you're driving in a car. And your car represents like your mental output, your work output, your system that you're using. Um, and it can go from 0 to 100 miles an hour. Now, traditionally, what productivity gurus will say is, we can tell you how to get 100 miles an hour out of your car all the time. And the problem is, is that for short bursts bursts of work, that's that's possible you can kind of do that the problem is, is this is a long journey and like if you imagine driving the car if you drive at 100 miles an hour things are going to start to break you're going to wear down the components um you're gonna you know if you go through um a residential area at 100 miles an hour you're going to get arrested uh, or your car will crash and you'll never finish that journey and what we need to do is to get to, to um the end goal so, as a result, I think a lot of productivity advice is useless for writers uh, because it only applies to sort of short bursts. And as you know, I think in most writers, you know, what will happen is you'll have good days, you'll have bad days. You know, it's, you know, we strive for consistency as writers, but we, we never seem to achieve it. So, um, what we will do instead is um, we'll drive along and we'll be going fine and we'll obey the speed limits you know when when it's sort of a tricky plot point we might only go 20 miles an hour but we'll still make progress and then when we go on the motorway and it's it's clear we'll go at 70 miles an hour and have a really productive day and we'll get loads of words written and then inevitably what happens is we go past a town called Netflix or Call of Duty or uh, I'm trying to think of something else you would procrastinate on. Cleaning the kitchen. And that town, it's a pretty town. And you're, some, you know, some people, what will happen is they go, oh, that looks like a pretty town. We'll, we'll pull off in, into that town. And what happens is that they go, well, you know what? Let's spend a couple of days here. It's, you know, it's really a, more appealing than, you know, the desert that we've got to go across next. And what happens is that you kind of get stuck in that town. And by the time you kind of go on to the, the journey, well, you know, the, the, the race is over. They're not handing out any medals. It's not a race, by the way. But they're not handing out any medals anymore. And, you know, it's going to take you three years to get to the end because you keep stopping off at every town and things like that. Now, the flip side is, and there's this concept called toxic productivity which is kind of the 100 miles an hour but there's also like a version of this where you kind of go right we're getting up at six in the morning we want we want to finish we want to get to the end goal as soon as possible because if we can we can enter another endurance race we can start a new project so you know there is is in our interest as writers to try and minimize the length of that journey right but we don't want to sacrifice quality. So, you know, which is the endurance of the car. 
Because if we go too fast, the things will break and it won't work and then we will never complete that journey. Um, so, there's this other idea where, you know, you say, right, we'll get up at six. This is what most people will do. Is they'll say, right, we'll get up at six. We'll work to ten o'clock at night. We'll get up the next day. And then we'll do the same again. And the problem is, is that, you know, if you think of a car journey, you sleep in the car, you know, where, wherever we are and things like that, we'll just keep going, just get through it. And there's times when you've got to do that, if you've got a deadline and, and things like that, that happens. We want to try and avoid that because if you think about it, with if you, if you drive at all, what happens if you, you're driving all day and you get a little bit of sleep, you get a decent amount of sleep, but then you keep driving all day again, and you're driving all day again after that, is that you'll get tired, you'll make mistakes, um, you'll have an accident. Um, so where we kind of want to be, ideally, as a writer, is that we're driving along. We're kind of like, look, you know, Netflix is coming up in the next 100 miles. We've made some really good um, mileage today. So why don't we pull over in Netflix, we'll, you know, we won't carry on till 10 o'clock, we'll finish at 4, um, we'll pull over in Netflix, we'll have a great night there, we'll have a great meal, we'll spend the evening in the thing, get up a little bit later tomorrow, but we'll carry on the journey. And, you know, that's, for me, what writing producti uh, productively is all about, is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to reach that end goal with our sanity intact, um, with the quality still there, and do it in a decent enough time. Now, as I said, it's not a race, um, but in order to kind of do that, using our rally analogy, it's about building the car and how we kind of we set that car up. And so, what this channel is going to be doing is we're going to be looking at. Um, a lot of things from different areas, you know, predominantly um, we'll be looking at the things from the productivity space and saying, well, how do they apply to writing? How can we be uh, better writers, but at the same time still understanding that we have a certain way of working? So what we do is we build that car to get us from point A to B to suit the way that we work. Um, and it's going to be different for everybody. And this is why a lot of writing advice is really, really crap. Because, you know, some people are plotters. They need a map. You know, they before they set off, they need a map. And they need to mock off each town they're going to pass through. Other people are like, look, just get in the car. We'll follow the road signs as we go. We'll work it out as we go along. And, you know, <clears throat> both ways are viable. Um... But you'll find that everybody has a slightly different way of working. And this channel, what I want to do is explore some of those different ways of working. So we, we will touch on craft. But what we're, we're really looking at is like, right, how do I organise myself to write consistently? How do I make sure that if I've only got an hour a day, or a couple of hours a day, how do I maximise the number of words I'm going to get in that, that small period of time? How do I manage my life so that writing can take a priority but kind of at the same time um, that I don't kind of give up on my commitments to family and to the cleaning the house, he says, looking around, um, and things like that. So um, there's a lot of areas to explore. Um, I have over the last five or six years, no, probably even ten years now. I used to be of the type of person, I used to sit down at my keyboard and I would go, right, I'm writing this story and I would write. And, you know, using the analogy of our car journey, I would turn right at some point and drive into the middle of the desert. And I realised I needed a map, right? I, and I did this as an experiment because uh, my first published book took me years and years to write. Um, other ones have taken me years to revise. But um, uh, I realised that I was more productive working to a map. Now, that may not be the case for you, so we'll, e we'll explore those things. Um, and 
then what I found was that what I tried to do was I had all my to-do lists and I'd have all my writing to-do lists and I'd have all my um, you know uh, housework to-do list and uh, other activities to-do list and what I would find was that literally they would all collide and I would get nothing done and uh, that's why I first became interested in productivity and I looked at um, uh, a task management system, system called uh, GTD and we're going to go into this in another video and I'm not saying this is necessarily for you but what I realized from looking at this was that um, instead of you are one person so instead of having five different lists I needed one list uh, but what I needed to do was then be able to manage all these different tasks prioritize them plan them out complete them um, uh, and it kind of gave me a way to kind of deal with that and I used online tools to help me and um, I did I got my, my writing massive the amount of words I got written was uh, and the quality of the words that I wrote massively massively improved and since then I've been doing further things to try and improve trying to understand the way that I work um, there's this great phrase I keep coming across is that you fall to the level of your systems so if I'm having a bad day or a busy day do I still manage to get some words written not every day for me that's just the way I work sometimes I need to kind of part of my writing process is to go away and think about the next scene that's just the way that I work but it m ensures that my writing doesn't get forgotten about and that if I do have a day where I don't write that there are things in place to kind of nudge me back to it so that I'm not in that Netflix town for months on end you know I it's this balance between living life and, and getting these projects done and uh, as I say I uh, you know, there are things like word trackers which can be quite helpful. You know, you've probably come across those before. Um, that can sometimes feel like a competition sometimes with how many words you can do in a year. But it can also be really helpful sometimes because there are, I'll admit that this year I haven't, I've felt all over the place. I mean, the pandemic has been really weird on all of us. And I've been busy on a lot of things, but I sometimes need to take stock. And I looked before I was doing, the, you know, putting some videos together. I was like, <coughs> I have it in my my system where, literally, I every day, uh, every piece of writing, I can I enter my my uh, when I've written, how long I've written for, um, uh, number of words, which project it's associated with, and I have like a little online form, and it just takes me like thirty seconds to do really really quick I always do it at the end of every writing session and what this because I've built the system for me what it means is that I can go in and I can say right actually I've worked this many hours on this project this year and I know for a fact from all my data that I've written over uh, uh, just under I think 400,000 words so far this year so when there were days when I feel like, oh God, I'm getting nothing done. I don't feel like I've achieved anything this year. And writing is quite a solitary experience. And you do sometimes feel like you do all this work with very little to show a lot of the time. Trust me, I know that. Uh, you know, because, you know, you'll write a book and you might send it off to an agent and it's not good enough. Or even if you've got an agent, you might go out for out to... Um, out to uh, out to the market, take it out to market, and it might not sell, or something will happen, or a publisher will fall through. You know, publishing is is tough, and so having these tools that you can go and actually have a look at. First of all, it gives you you know it makes you realise well, okay, that's what I've done. But on top of that, it also allows you to start using that data to analyse. Well, actually. I'm losing time here when I could maybe there's something I could maybe do to improve it um, you know little hacks that I do is that I I find I found out that my writing um, I the speed at which I write 
if I'm right, you know, I will sit down and I will write to a certain amount of quality for a first draft. Um, when I'm writing, I'm not thinking about trying to get the words out. I'm trying to think about getting the scene done. Sometimes that's, sometimes it feels faster. Sometimes it feels slower. But I can tell you now that I write non-fiction at around 2,000 words an hour. I write fiction at around 1,500 words an hour. Doesn't seem to vary much. Even if I feel like I'm struggling, uh, you know, I can look at the... I've got data that will kind of back that up. Uh, my mind plays tricks on me in that respect. But I've also found that the longer I write for, that rate will drop. So, if I write for an hour, I'll write about 1,500 words an hour on fiction. If I write for two hours, I'm probably doing only about 1,000 words an hour. So, um, it's got to the stage where it's sometimes more beneficial for me to have two smaller writing sessions with a break in between than it is for having one longer writing session. Right. I've still got this using, the, using the same amount of time, I'm just allocating it differently. Um, I have a little product, uh, ha product hacks, I do, uh, product hacks, uh, life hacks that I do, where I will balance some of my writing against something fun, uh, and I will kind of swap between the two of them throughout. If I'm writing for a whole day, swap between them throughout the whole day, and I can get massively. It's my Mobius strip of productivity, I call it. Um, so this channel is, you know, in part to kind of talk about some of those ideas and try and help you with, uh, first of all, understanding your writing. To start getting some data and start realising, well, what is it that I do and how is it that I write? But also to have a look at other ideas. There's, I'm constantly looking at ways that people organise their projects and organise their writing. Um, and I try them and sometimes they work for me sometimes they don't sometimes I adopt it and then I change it and things like that but what it's meant is that um, I am a more efficient writer than I was before I started this journey and so I want to explore that now if the the channel you know this is an experiment like any YouTube you never know whether it's gonna take off or whether it's you know people other people are interested but if it does Maybe we can get other writers in to talk about how they manage the project of writing. Um, what they do when uh, they are faced with certain challenges. You know, I, I know for a fact, from my, again, from my own data, that when I have act transition, so like when I go from act one to act two, or act two to act, the final act, uh, I really struggle with the project. I will slow down. Um, I don't know, I, I read some time ago that uh, there was a story about Neil Gaiman where he said, he phoned up his agent one day and he was writing a novel and, and basically said, look, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what's happened, I can't write anymore, um, this project is an absolute pile of crap, um, I don't know why I ever thought I was a writer, um, it's, you know, it's all gone wrong, I'm going to have to scrap the project. And the agent or the editor turned around and said, uh, oh, so you're at that point of the project. And he said, well, what do you mean? And they went, you always say this when you get to a certain point in, in writing a novel. And I think that's the same for all of us. And it's about understanding that and understanding this weird process that goes on in our head. Um, so it would be interesting to kind of get some doubt whether we'll ever get Neil Gaiman, but if we ever do, maybe 100th episode, uh, maybe we'll do that, but um, get other writers in, and really, you know, instead of talking about, you know, uh, really dig into the weeds, do you know what I mean, really trying to understand how we mentally and how we organise our, uh, you know, mentally prepare and organise ourselves for our writing projects. So, that's basically what this channel is about. If you're interested in it, um, be sure to, um, what is it they say, click the bell and subscribe. Um, and let me know your ideas. Let me know if you see anything really interesting that talks about, you know, um, uh, how to write more efficiently. Um, you know, there's a few things that I've read. I'm always interested in hearing more. Let's get a discussion going about this so that we can not only write faster but with maintaining quality 
and not burning ourselves out. Let's see how it goes. So let me know your comments below. Um, let me know what processes you use. How do you manage your writing? Uh, give me loads of comments below and I will see you next week for the next video. Thanks everyone. Take care.